Hello and welcome to Module 5, Section 1, Identity and Off-Campus Study. What will this module cover? In this module, you will learn about the social identities you carry, learn about social identities and how they shape your perceptions of the world around you, reflect how your social identities shape your relationships interaction off campus. Before we begin, we'd like to acknowledge that the land that DePaul University sits on is the original homelands of the Miami Tribal Nation. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory, and we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous peoples still connected to this land on which we gather. When we're talking about social identities, what are social identities? Specifically, we're talking about age, race, gender, ethnicity, nationality, first language, sexual orientation, socioeconomic class, religious or spiritual affiliation, physical, emotional, developmental ability. Each of these categories, every person has, just like the fingerprint image that you see, every person may have unique attributes within each category, but it's important to start our conversation about off-campus experiences in thinking about how our identities are shaped by these social categories that we have. And just for clarification purposes, race and ethnicity tend to often get confused. And so when we think about race, race is the socially constructed category assigned to certain identity, uh, certain groups based off of uh, largely skin color. But when we think about ethnicity, the difference with ethnicity is that ethnicity specifically relates to cultural aspects to a particular group. So you may identify as white, but you may have a ethnicity of being Jewish or Irish, meaning that you have a cultural background that is specific to your identity that doesn't necessarily translate just to your skin color. Additionally, the category of physical, emotional, developmental ability sometimes has questions. And so when we're talking about physical ability, that may be in regards to being deaf of hard of hearing or maybe having a walking um, disability. Emotional ability refer refers to any sort of uh, condition such as depression or anxiety. And then finally, developmental ability may refer to a learning disability such as ADHD. So again, it's important to think about how we all are shaped by these social identity categories in regards to thinking about our... So why do identities matter to off-campus study? Social identities help you understand who you are, understand your host culture. Social identities help construct your understanding of your host locations, culture, and customs. And then finally, they help you gain perspective on your own identity through the lens of your host culture. So all of the social identity categories that were discussed in the previous slide make up who you are as an individual. And when you go off campus, your identities that you carry begin to take shape in a more complex way based on your interactions with your host culture because you will be able to start to look at how you may be similar or different to your host culture across your identities based off of the people that you see around you. And also, it is helpful to know that your social identities will help you understand what the cultural, cultural customs may look like in terms of if a religious identity in your host community it looks different than what you grew up with, then that will allow for you to understand some differences in the way that you understand your religious identity. And then it also allows you to get perspective on your own identity through the lens of your host culture. So if you have a nationality such as being an American, you may learn through your, your off-campus experience what that may look like in terms of how the host culture may view Americans. So again, it's good to start thinking about this before you go off campus. So it's important to also understand that your identities also um, have perceptions about them and sometimes perceptions about your identities precede you. And the decisions that you make while off campus reflect more than just you as an individual and sometimes have major consequence.
So it's important to know your identity because it instills pride as well as humility. And therefore, understanding who you are and the values you hold will help you navigate cultural differences. So, for example, who are these people? I'll give you a minute to see if you can recognize who they are. If you guessed Ryan Lochte, Amanda Knox, and Leangelo Ball, you are correct. And the reason that these three people are being shown are because they are all U.S. individuals in particular who have had incidences happen while internationally that are important to understand when it comes to identity. So Ryan Lochte is a uh, famous swimmer for the U.S. Olympics and in the Rio Olympics, he was found responsible for creating damage to uh, property, but he tried to blame it on local Brazilians, which created quite the controversy in terms of his creating a narrative about d the local community actually being to blame versus him taking the blame. Second, Amanda Knox was studying in Italy and her roommate was brutally murdered and she was implicated in the murder, was convicted, but then later her conviction was overturned. And then Leangelo Ball was a uh, basketball player for UCLA and traveled over to China and was caught shoplifting from several different retailers. So all of these stories are very important to highlight for the fact that these are narratives about particularly young Americans that are likely well known in different host cultures. So knowing that even though as you go abroad as your own individual self, that you represent more than just yourself. You represent DePaul University, you represent your family in the uh, hometowns that you come from, and you also represent your host nation if you are a domestic student. So it's just important just to think about these identities as you go into your off-campus experience. So it's important to also consider how your social identities critically, how they show up different across social contexts, how privilege operates to normalize some social identities over others across cultures, for example, English as a first language, and how social identities are shared but also differ across cultures, which can build community and encourage empathy. So again, thinking about if you have certain social identities that may be different in other places, even if you may identify as like a majority religious group, so if you identify as Muslim, it may be that your context of uh, your religious identity to the Muslim faith may look different if you go to another place where the religion looks different. Additionally, how privilege operates to normalize some social identities over others across cultures is important to think about. So as many of you are fluent in English as a first language, you may start to notice the way that you get preferential treatment while you're off campus in regards to perhaps maybe other students or even locals who do not speak English. So it's important just to take that into consideration. And finally, thinking about how social identities are shared but also differ across cultures allows for you to uh, build community and encourage empathy specifically when also thinking about how certain matters such as uh, social identities such as race and gender may look different across cultures and may allow for you to find opportunities to build relationships with local host community to be able to encourage understanding across the differences. So the important takeaway here is the idea of passing and trying to be fluent and be able to fully integrate oneself into the culture is not the goal. The goal is to be able to understand your social identities more fully through the opportunity of looking at the differences in your host community. This image here is a Instagram uh, post that humorously looks at uh, Barbie and it's called Barbie Savior and essentially places the idea of being a person of 
domestic U.S. background going into other cultures, trying to achieve the idea of being fully integrated, whereas in the picture one can see that you can very much tell that they, there's still some differences there. And so the important thing to remember is that the idea of trying to pass will not give you the deepest understanding of the culture, as said by Anders Larson, for the fact that you are still yourself as an individual underneath whatever clothing you wear, no matter how you adapt to the language, your history, and your background is still very much important to having this experience. And it's not so much about foregoing the identity that you have here in the U.S., but actually thinking about how do you integrate the identities that you carry into your experience while off campus into the identities that you'll learn about while you're off campus to in order to make yourselves more complex and not necessarily thinking that it's very possible for you to fully understand all the aspects of a host culture in a few months during your off-campus experience. We'll now switch and talk about a TED Talk called The Danger of the Single Story. And I encourage you to pause the video here, pull out your cell phone, and open the QR code to watch The Danger of the Single Story before continuing. Now that you've watched The Danger of the Single Story, we will continue. For The Danger of the Single Story, there's a particular quote that's very important to highlight, which is the single story creates stereotypes. And the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue, but that they are incomplete. They make one story become the only story. So the reason this TED Talk video is important to off-campus study is to think about the ways in which going into off-campus experiences, knowledge gets created about what you know about the communities that you're about to go into, whether it be very superficial or maybe you have read and have talked to people from the, the host community it does not necessarily give you the fullest picture of what you can expect about what it means to be a member of the host community that you're going into. And on top of that, the single stories that also are created about you as a student precede you, just like we talked about with the three U.S. students, uh, Ryan Locke, the Amer Amanda Knox, and LiAngelo Ball. So it's important to remember that not only are single stories created sometimes by you as you go into your experiences, but often single stories are created about you by your host community as well. And so it's important to think about the fact that single stories are about social identities and they're also rooted in bias that is taught to us. And so when we think about this, it actually starts at the micro level with the self. So we as ourselves have our own sense of how we identify ourselves and that's where we have the most control over how we see ourselves. So thinking about the social identity groups, you may think of yourself as, you know, some of your identities may be more important to you, maybe your race, maybe your gender, maybe your sexual orientation. Those are things that will show up perhaps maybe at the top level for you, but that's how you see yourself. And it is um, in that identity formation that you have the most control over how you choose to identify. However, as you look outside of yourself into family and community expectations, there are additional layers of singular stories that get to be created about either the identities that we carry as well as the identities that we don't. And so when you're looking across to your experience of going off campus, there's definitely the opportunity for you to recognize the ways in which singular stories may show up about the places that you're going that may be generated by um, lessons or knowledge that you've gained from your family or from your community. And so what this ends up doing is creating an idea of social group formation of in-group and out-group. So looking at who is similar to me versus who is different and very naturally in human development that nature of creating social groupings is a thing that happens it's just important to recognize how sometimes they may serve to create division rather than unity
And so what then happens is at a macro level, we find that there are hierarchical formations of certain groups that, find, or that are given more privileged uh, identities and being assigned status power uh, in the world. So thinking about how the U.S. is viewed globally is an example of this in terms of thinking about the world powers and how when you travel to other places, the U.S. may be viewed very differently than the host community just based off of the history and the knowledge of the way that these singular stories come up. So the the point here is just to be aware that these things do happen and be able to take it into your off-campus experience with a bit of awareness so that you are able to navigate and negotiate these realities much more effectively. So the biggest tip for uh, I, managing your identity off campus is just to sit down and be humble, as Kendrick Lamar would say. But specifically, there are certain tips that we want to leave you with that we think are very important to consider. So the prim primary tip for managing identity off campus is to check your privilege. And this looks a lot of different ways, specifically being able to check your assumptions on the plane. Once you are on your way to your host place, it is important to recognize that having an open mind and being able to suspend judgments or preconceived notions allows for you to have the most opportunity to learn. Additionally, being able to check your ideas around majority versus minority mentality. Again, as we talked about in the previous slide, groupings and social groups are definitely a norm, but knowing that you may go from, for example, being a DePa college student where the majority of the people around you are DePa students to a place where you are no longer in the majority and being able to recognize the cultural customs around you look different in that it is not the same as being on DePaul's campus and uh, having DePaul students around you. And so it's important to hold yourself and others accountable for engaging in respectful and um, good behavior while you're off campus. Additionally, it's very important to diversify the relationships that you hold, particularly with those who are either visibly or invisibly different from you. Uh, going off campus is a time for uh, opening yourselves up to new challenges and being able to meet others who are not this similar to you will give you the most opportunity to grow. Additionally, looking into social media, it is very important thinking again about the messages that came from the dangers of the single story is that you yourself will have the opportunity to potentially shed light to the host location that you're going to that many of your family members and friends have never visited. So the information that you put on social media, particularly videos and narratives, should be taken with consideration to how they may or may not continue to project certain singular stories about that host location. Additionally, it's important to acknowledge the limits of your own and also your host location single stories because knowing that there are single stories that are created, the ability to suspend judgment once again and be able to be open to learning about alternative narratives can again benefit you greatly in being more open-minded and inclusive in your time while you're off campus. And then lastly, knowing that it's important to advocate for those identities that you share and being an ally for those that you don't share Every host location is going to have different potential cu cultural customs and laws. And so in particular, thinking about if you're in a place where there's more stricter laws around same-sex relationships and gender identity looks different, being able to recognize the ways that many, many, maybe some of your peers in your program may not be having the same open experience as you are and being able to support them in the best ways possible. Finally, it's also very important to be proud and informed. As we are in a very strong political climate, American politics and global politics are at an all-time high, and it's important no matter what, you, what it is that you believe that you know and understand what is going on so that 
you are able to be more effective in having conversations in your host communities about what politics are going on. Additionally, heritage and ancestral connections are very important, um, but also understanding that even as someone who may have a history to a, a certain place, that your upbringing and growing up in potentially the U.S., for example, still has a very different meaning than being a part of the host community. And so it's important just to recognize that you may have some boundaries that you have to figure out and negotiate. So don't be surprised if that comes up. Additionally, understanding that the host location politics would definitely be important to shaping your understanding of how the people in that community are understanding their own lived experiences. And so again, just like here in the US, regardless of however you feel about politics, whether you're very invested or you're not invested, it's important to actually be aware because you will be surprised how much you may be asked to comment on your own thoughts. And in some cases, having to represent a singular perspective of the United States, for example, is something that can be really challenging. And so being able to be aware that this does happen is something to be aware of. And then lastly, it's most important to do research of etiquette specific to your host location. It's always great to make a first impression, and it's okay to make mistakes, but it's not okay to not know. So the fact that there is so much information available through the uh, internet on where you're going into your host locations, just make sure that you take advantage of uh, understanding what is most important in order to make a good first impression. So finally, there are plenty of resources that you're welcome to take advantage of that we highly recommend, um, including the Hubbard Center, the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Your programs have website information. There's also Diversity Abroad, the Forum on Education Abroad, and Google and YouTube, and being able to just reach out to students who have studied abroad in the host location that you're going to. Uh, it's just definitely great to be able to take advantage of all these resources because we want you to have a very positive experience while you're off campus. So we thank you for watching this video and please proceed to completing the assignment.